What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the EAFC Career Mode, it's episode number 73, man I'm absolutely gutted, our undefeated season chance is gone but we are still top by 7 points clear of Inter and Lazio with 10 games to go but our treble dreams are definitely on the ropes on the back of that 2-1 loss away at the Emirates, we've got the second leg coming today in the Champions League last 16, so yeah I'm going to try and get through as much as I can today including that second leg against the Gunners and more big games in the Serie A and I'll also make sure to include that First leg of the Coppa Italia semi against Inter as well. So, loads to get through. Let's just jump straight into it. First game, Askley at home. Able to pull away at the top of the table and cement pole position. I bounced back against Bologna, but it's only been, I think, two wins in five or maybe two wins in six. It's uh, it's not been a good run of form. Well, it's been the worst run of form so far this season. And that collision there, that is when, this is when things like that just start to happen. Do you know what I mean? When you're starting to struggle, you're starting to go into bad form. It's like you attract bad energy and bad luck, you know. Me and my friends had a discussion about this, but we we uh, we were talking about Harry Maguire and when he was really going through the thick of it. Do you remember last season, the Europa League quarterfinal? I think it was against Sevilla. When uh, he came off the bench and then the ball just ricocheted off his face and went in. Like when when you're going through it, when you're going through like a bad time you just attract bad energy and bad luck just starts to happen you know it's so hard to get away from that but this should be the level of, oh such a nice goal that to be fair that is a really nicely worked goal Take across that and oh my god what a header loops over Mike and into the bottom corner. Man, oh man. You know, I mentioned this briefly in the last episode, but like, it, it, sometimes it feels like the AI just turned from like ultimate to super ultimate. They do things with inch perfect precision. My goodness, loops over Mike, drops into the bottom corner. You know, I'm not exaggerating here. A couple of inches lower and that's palmed away. A couple of inches to the side, and that hits the post. That is just absolutely bang on the money. Oh dear. These are the games where it's like, you know, it should should be pretty comfortable, but well, I haven't called this the hardest FC I've played for nothing. That's gotta be a straight red there, because there's no way the ref will blow without it. We were gonna go through one on one with Liaf. That's not a straight red. Yeah, okay, straight red card. That's that's the only only scenario where I don't mind play being pulled back there. Don't mind that at all, because clearly we're about to go through one on one. Okay, 10 men for the rest of the game. Let's see if we can take advantage of it. There's Kone, wins it back. Cox, easy money. Right, come on, let's, let's flip the script to win this game, man. Need to get on a run. Desperately need like a, a few good wins in a row. And we can start here. See Liao get into the far post. Can I float one to him? Perfect delivery. Oh, yeah. Right on the money and the comeback complete. As soon as Askey went down to 10 men, man, this is our game to lose, even from a losing position. Nice chance for Askely. Stoppage time. Final kick of the game. Floated in Mike. Got to claim that easy money. There we go. And that will do it. You know, when you've got to come from behind to beat a side with 10 men at home who are down to what would I say? Well, that sums up the difficulty of this game. And that's why I'm not one bit surprised. That quest for an undefeated season will continue for at least another season in another CM save. Still, win on the board as we try and pull away at the top. Speaking of overturning deficits, following game, Arsenal, CL, last 16, second leg. Lost the first leg 2-1 somehow, despite so many chances. But the second leg of the San Siro, I feel confident we can come from behind to make it through to the quarters. Forza Milan. I thought we were unlucky not to win the first leg, let alone ending up losing it. So, you know, I, I feel optimistic. I feel confident. You know, I say this often. Like, sometimes, like, when you've, when you've, like, played really well, when you've done really well, you've just come up short. Like, sometimes it, it, can, it can be natural to feel disheartened, but you've got to remember, that's just life, you know? Not everything is going to work out. Oh, as Kona hits the post. And sometimes you're just going to be a little bit unlucky. And I think we were unlucky in that first leg. Still down by one, but off the post. Yeah, I feel confident there. I feel really confident. As Liao finds Bennett, worked in for Vega. 
Liao, he's onside, Pabega slots it home. No, the flag's going to go up late. It's going to be offside. Camera pans out. That will be disallowed. Great start. Woodwork rattle. Ball in the back and then with disallowed for offside. That looked very, very tight, though. Ooh. Look at that. A size shoe smaller, and I think that's onside. Bennett can tackle, and Cox is there. See Liao to the left, long to the right. Gabe makes the brilliant run. Ball rolls around the covering defender. That'll go in. Yep, there we go. As soon as he got around that covering defender, I just knew. Smack it to Ramsdale's far corner, and that should surely find the back of the net. It was coming. It was coming, and this is where I felt confident, because we had loads of chances like this in the first leg. We only took the one. Ramsdale would have come to great saves as well. But like I said earlier, like if, you, if you've played really well, you just haven't had the rubber degree. And that's just one of those things. You know, goalkeeper's on fire. Maybe a couple of uh, unlucky deflections or whatever. That's just one of those things. But like if you've got evidence, you've performed really well, just haven't had the rubber degree. And don't feel too critical on yourself, man. Seriously, just trust you'll get it right next time out. Right on cue, two quick fire goals and a tie turned on its head. Garte winning, mate. It's dude, man. Like, seriously. I, I said before, like, I don't really include that many defensive highlights in my uh, in my gameplay because it would just take so long to uh, to include so many of them, but also condense the episodes too. But, like, it, it's it's players like that that you really, their importance can't be understated, you know? They're, they're just there to do the dirty work, and that sort of stuff doesn't show up in the stat sheet, and it doesn't often get represented in their average rating, but... I tell you, man, having a, a world-class DM that can sit back, break up the play, and just offload, you have no idea how invaluable that can be to a winning team. The amount of times this guy's broken up an attack that's led to a counter, or simply put, just stopped a chance for the opposition. Unfortunately for that moment there, nice little ball through, and it's 3-3. What a tie. Easy. Easy. Come on, don't lose at the end. Cross headed away. I think that's probably going to do it. Oh, is there going to be a handball? It is off Rafael Leal. Didn't know much about that. And the Gunners could win this here. Odegaard chips it in. That should be one. No, no, it's not. I don't believe I've lost this. I do not believe I've lost this. I'm speechless. I actually can't believe that. I really can't. I, I thought for sure Scalvini was going to win that. And in the end, it actually looked like it came off his head. Instead, Marino claims it, and I can't believe I've lost this. I actually cannot believe I've lost this. I'm, just, I'm just absolutely stunned right now. Wow. I don't know what to say. I, I actually do not know what to say. I felt so confident we would get through this tie. And especially when we flip the script to go tune it up on the night. I cannot believe I've just lost that. I don't know how I've lost that. I really don't. I literally played almost perfectly for the entirety of two legs, and yet I've, I've lost somehow 4-3. I, I am absolutely speechless right now. I genuinely can't believe we just lost that game. I really can't. I can't believe we just got out of there. The manager range dropped significantly as well. But what did we say in the last episode? When we've lost an objective, we just have to put it behind us, readjust, and move on to the next thing. And that now is winning a domestic double. We're starting with, hopefully, a big win here at the Stadio San Paolo. Napoli away in the south of Italy next. So, no, I keep saying Stadio San Paolo, not Stadio Diego Armando Maradona. You know, it's hard for me to keep up with stadium name changes. I think that was done a couple of years ago now. Even so, Ramos wins it back there. Go on, away you go, mate. You've got to beat Luis Felipe over pace, surely. Take it yourself, mate, because you need a goal. Come on! Drills it off the post as if to answer the critics and give us the lead. Milan lead in South Italy. That's the final three minutes, still leading by one. Napoli forcing a lot of blue shirts forward. And that's led to a quick little chance, oh, which I've absolutely blown. And I don't think it's going to matter, but no, it's not a win about Frugate, and that will do it. Milan will hold on. And Lord knows we needed to. Oh, really nicely done. It's going to squirt in. Oh, what's going on? <laughs> is he claiming that? I think he has gone Carlo Hits. Oh, Dalton, the, uh, the new gen. <laughs> That's an own guy. He's got He's been forced on the stretcher. Talk about taking over the team, man. That is absolutely hilarious. 
Giancarlo Ramos forty to go. Although I uh, I don't know if he'll be claiming. Yes, he is claiming it. He is claiming it actually. Somehow, I'm pretty sure it was the defender that nicked it over the keeper. But even so, talk about taking on for the team, Giancarlo. You love to see it. He's had his struggles here, but you can't doubt his commitment to the cause. Bouncing back though in the best possible way. Actions, not words. Staying top in the pursuit of at least a domestic double. And I think that's probably going to be Ramos done for the season as well now that we're in April. I'm pretty sure he'll be, uh, he'll be done. Yeah, broken elbow, that's him, uh, that's him done now. So, yeah, he, he won't come back on time for the, uh, for the final fixtures, unfortunately. Because that's gone Carlo. Talk about taking one for the team, man. I just seen we got a, uh, a youth player on set with email. Bosco. Le Bosque. Uh, once a uh, pro deal, he's my favourite player in the academy right now as well, so we'll definitely get one, and uh, we'll promote him to the uh, to the first team. Right, so uh, yeah, we've got uh, the April fixtures coming in, and we'll start with AS Roma at home. Still top for now, but with our form erratic, and Inter and Lazio just not slipping up. The gap is still just a four, although we do have the game in hand. So, Roma, following game, a chance to once again extend it to seven, but Inter are going absolutely nowhere in a free horse race between us, them, and Lazio as well. It's heating up here. Yeah, it's certainly not over yet. Ramos now going down for the rest of the season. Hincapi is coming back, but they're not ready just yet. Xavi Simons is also back. We played him in the last game, so... Yeah, we're uh, we're certainly not sitting as pretty as we were halfway through the campaign. But if we can just string a few wins together, oh, string a few wins together, then I think we'll be all right. My goodness, he flew in there, and yes, he won a lot of the ball, but only through taking down the out first. My goodness, that's a definite penalty I've ever seen one. So Rafa with a chance to open the scoring from the spot just seven minutes in. Going top left with Liao, our talisman, to give us the early lead. Easy money. Milan in front. I'm seeing the AI is starting to slide a lot more around their box. That's that's quite surprising. I'm not saying necessarily a bad thing, but it needs to be timed better. I mean, I, I understand it's like a 50-50 duel, but do you remember against, uh, was it Bologna we faced this season? Where that man just flew in from behind on Gabe for no reason. And for that moment there, you didn't really need to dive in like that. Just stay on your feet and jockey with uh, with long needing to turn into the ball. Even so, leading by one, and Cox is on there. He's definitely on. Oh, he's just about squeezing. I thought I absolutely blew that there, but just about squirmed it home. First goal on a few for Cox. Me and Alan tuned it up early. Long. Cox, lovely bit of skill. Kone. Long continues his run. I'll dink it to him. Gabe for free. Good save by our ex Luton Academy grad Ethan Woods. We're still leading by two. Cool to see that he stayed there since season four, I think it was. As he can't deny the Nianzu header. I do feel like players just move on far too quickly in CO. So when a player stays at their new club, I like to see that. Even so, Tango gets to think his first of the season filling in for Hinkapi. And we're already freeing it up, 23 minutes in. We got the first leg of the Coppa Italia semi in the week against Inter. So this is what I wanted. A really comfortable lead in the first start. So at the break, I could take some of my starters off and give them rest time for that cup semi. As Raspadori finds Rashford. And Pellegrini offloads and Alvarez. Oh, what a save, Mike. Easy, easy, easy. Oh, lovely ball inside. Raspadori, great bit of composure to seat Mike on the floor and make it 3-1. Well, had an early warning sign and now they've got a goal back. I mean, we lost from 2 up against Arsenal. They came back to draw 2-2 but win the tie. So, you know, lead changes, certainly not uncommon in this year's CM. So this game, far from over, but Simon's wonderful bit of dribbling. Wood with the save and Liao can score him in. Can Cox know how as that ball stayed out? That's the middle. Free header. Oh, wow. Not again. Surely not. Bruno Guimaraes with a bullet header finds the corner. And Roma looking to do an Arsenal battle back from the deficit and stop us getting the dub. 3-2. It's not over yet. Bennett steps inside. Liao, Samuel off the bench, Gabe, surely, oh yeah, finesse it in to the top corner and that should do it now, back to a two goal cushion, come on me now, we need this win.
Mate, the games today would be like Jack Harlock, first class. Brilliant contest. Now, six goal for him. We come out with the win. Back to back wins, and Lord knows we needed it on the exit to Arsenal. We've got a cup semi final coming in midweek. This is brilliant. Yep, let's do it. Following game, first leg of the Copper Italia semi against Inter. This technically being a home game here as we aim to keep our domestic double dreams alive. Last year, this is where we exited the competition against Napoli. Got to put it right this year, though. My job might depend on it. Falls on me now. Yeah, I feel confident we're going to win this area still, even though we have been stumbling a little bit recently. Oh, he's on there, Long. He's on. I need someone in the middle. Hold on a second, guys. Hold on. Oh, what a save by the... Luton Town Academy grad, Polish goalkeeper. Yeah, I feel confident we'll win this area, I do. I still feel, even though recently we've been a little bit shaky, I think we're going to be all right. But the, the cup, after what happened last year, oh, oh, let's just say I'm nervous to say the very least indeed. But make a free header, surely no! Free header, but again denied by the pig, Paul in goal. Still, nil-nil. Oh, yes, but it was coming! Tommaso Pabega! This guy can do literally anything, man! Come on! Easy, easy. I need... <coughs> she needs to sneeze. Bless me. As uh, Kone makes the interception and Liao gets it away. That's always a worry when that happens, you know. As Liao's on the break here and it's led to a break, to be fair. Cox slips it through. Game to wrap it up, drills it in. Bless me, bless you, bless Gabriel Long. Milan tune it up, and I think we should see this first leg out. It's yours, mate, it's yours. Yep, went in. We should win that back, and Sam to Pabego. If I can launch that down the left-hand side, oh, what a chance. What a chance to wrap this first leg up. With a third goal, no, Federico De Marco wins it. And, well, that's just silly. That's just really silly. That might be the tie there, let alone just a game. Awful, awful decision. And Samuel off the bench wraps it up. You can't do that against a high-pressing Milan side. I think we've got one foot in the final. After last season, we had to put it right this year. And what's that saying? Learn from your mistakes. We lost the first leg and couldn't come back last season. This year, we've put it right with a 3-0 demolition in the first leg. I think we've got one foot in the final here. Right, still one more, yeah, we'll end on this. Final game away from home against Salerno Town. Inter once again cutting the gap to four points, but we still have this uh, game in hand. Let's restore the gap to seven and close out with a big three points. So frustrating, man, honestly. Like, I, uh, I'm, I'm fuming still that we've, we've gone out of the Champions League reasonably early. It's Liao. Oh, he's denied by Pickford. But um, I couldn't really have done any more. And that, that's the thing, like... I could understand if I, you know, made some glaring errors or whatever, but really I don't think I could have done much more. When things like that happen, I guess you just got to take it, you know. It is what it is, man. Take the L, move on. There's Fabian, finds Cox. Lovely bit of skill. And now can he finish? No, good block, but the chance remains alive. And Gabriel hits the post. And Salerno Town are all clear. Come on. Okay, Salerno Town are flashbacks to the Arsenal game as Elijah floats one in and a header does find the back of the net. Talk about deja vu as that young new gen centre half gives Salerno Town a lead. Well, we would still be four clear with six to go and Destiny still in our own hands. But I've got to be honest here, man. I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. Plenty of game to go, though. As we get back on, no, almost back on level two. It's literally second time we've hit the post today. Greenwood to Le Mans. Kessie's pass intercepted. And Hinkapi to Long. Back in the team, Hinkapi. And as Cox, oh, I just couldn't slide it through. So many white shirts coming forward there. Just can't offload on time. It's definitely more goals in this game today. No question. It's absolutely end-to-end -end stuff right now. Midfield, never heard of it. And forward we go again. The turnovers are leading to constant attacks. And surely this time we're going to make one count. Cox to Liao. This has got to find the back of the net. No, Pickford with the save. Somehow, we still haven't found the back of the net in the first half, man. Crazy. Oh, 
great tackle, Ugarte, and surely this time, surely this time, there we go, pick the ball up, no, we don't just want the point, we want to win this, come on, here we go, here we go, here we go, Gabe, flicks on, Cox just about gets away, can he feed through Liao, oh, brilliant ball, come on, Rafa to the rescue, it's not the first time I've said it, and I doubt it will be the last, a brace in seven minutes, for, I, I would say, our talisman. As, as good as Gabe's been in this debut season, Cox once again having a brilliant second season and a mic between the sticks. This guy is still the star, man. Rafa to the rescue again. Nice chance to learn a Tana, and I think it's going to come to nothing. I'm going to keep the ball far forward enough, and they don't. That'll do it. If you've got to grind it out, you've got to grind it out. Big, big victory. Four on the trot for me and Alan. And it's a great way to bounce back after exiting the Champions League early in the last 16. Big three points, we'll extend it back to seven with one foot in the Coppa Italia final. And also now, just four wins away from the Serie A title as well. But that was this episode of the EAFC Karuma, guys. Big fan, which you enjoyed it. If you had them, please do drop a like. I'm sure you'll have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode, which will be the penultimate episode of Season 7. As you try and get through to the Coppa Italia final and possibly wrap up the Serie A title as well. Thanks for watching, much love. And I'll see you for the next episode very soon.